there are 76 million of us just here in the US. We are the biggest generation that ever existed. We were called the me ones, the crazy ones, and boy, do we know what that means, don't we? In fact, we have reinvented every single phase of our life. We were the yuppies, we were the hippies. We like innovation. Well, now we are in the winter of our life. And I can assure you, this is not going to be your average winter. I invite you to join me at Boomerology Reviews every single week so we can figure out how boomers are reshaping this phase of their lives. Join me. This episode of Boomerology Revealed is brought to you by Standard, your best option for mobility products. Be independent with Standard.com. Welcome to Boomerology Review TV. I'm Shahar Boyayan, your host. On today's episode, I'm going to take you into a chocolate exhibition. We are going to learn about chocolate and meet some companies that really treat chocolate as a form of art. We are also going to talk about how boomers are trendsetters and take a look at boomer advertising. Join me. Here's what we are going to do for fun today. We are going to visit a chocolate exhibit. It's really, really fun. We are going to learn a lot about chocolate and I hope they have some samples. In rainforest, you find a tree named cacao. And this is the fruit of the cacao where chocolate is made from. For example, Madagascar, Venezuela, Brazil, they all have lots of cacao trees. And, you know, it really took hundreds of years before people really figure out that chocolate could be made from the fruit of the cacao. We've got different um, ingredients yes. that we add to it. It's all, we have our pure, so it's 70%. Then we add, um, we have a hot mole, a salt, espresso, a tart cherry, a ginger and a, an orange peel bar. Delicious. I really like the pure. This particular cacao is really nuanced, beautifully nuanced, with almost a um, honey tones and fruitiness as well. And sometimes you'll pick up caramel. Can you tell me about your system? I am starting at the beginning and I'm sampling the different ones and marking the ones that I prefer. And then when I'm through sampling, I'm going to purchase. Did you know that animals actually help plant cacao trees? It's very important for us always to be aware of wildlife and their importance in our society and in our food. For example, with chocolate or with the cacao, they like to eat the cacao pod, so they break with the beak to eat the pulp inside. But the seeds are very, very bitter, so they don't like that, and they throw around, and therefore you get new cacao trees. After the Spanish brought cacao to Europe, it didn't take too long for them to figure that adding sugar would make it very, very sweet as a drink, and that very fast is spread through the wealthy classes. You know, coffee at that time was just for the working classes, but the wealthy, they would like to have a drink of cocoa, hot cocoa, in the morning when they woke up. So the, the maids would come and bring a sip, and that was the main difference. They would drink cocoa, working classes would drink coffee. Hey, may I get a sip of your chocolate, please? You have a long history with chocolate, right? We do. It's been uh, passed down since Steve's grandmother, basically. Oh, so it wasn't your family? You know, it, it, chocolate's always been in my family. Like, my grandmother dipped chocolates her whole life, and she learned when she was 13 years old. She actually learned, um, it was a place called Lindsay's um, Candies. It's long, you know, it's, it's been out of business. But she actually taught my family how to do chocolates, and they did it as a hobby. And about 11 years ago, Kate and I, we, all, we opened up a shop in the avenues and kind of took her love and her passion, my grandma's passion, and turned it into a business. It, you know, she would freak out to know that somebody actually cared about the chocolates to keep it going. We make them all by hand, um, so we don't have enrobing machines. So we make our caramel, we make our all our centers, we hand cut them, we hand dip them. So it's they they have a special taste to them. It's a different style where the chocolate layer on the outside is a little bit thicker, uh -huh. and uh, we make it's a lot of fun. We put a lot of love into it. And I know you guys have a, a you know a fun history because you you were also on a TV show. What's next for you guys? 
do you think? To make people smile. Yeah. You, you know, chocolate, I, chocolate is the way, right? I, I think Katie and I, we love what we created, and we did create more than just a chocolate shop. We created an experience, and we want to make people happy. One of Kate's passions was films. So in the summer, we do outdoor movies, and we do that at our building. We actually put a big movie screen on the roof. People sit across the street and watch outdoor movies and eat ice cream and chocolate. That's what's in our future, is just making people happy. And that's in the future of every business, providing a cool experience when we get out of our homes. And boomers, they don't go out of their home to have a bad experience, right? Right, right. Like a special time. Right, we love community and it, we love that camaraderie. So. so cool, but but they better have Katie help them because I'm just kind of cranky and mean. So me bad. too. Their experience may be bad with me. So they could ask for Kate and okay. she is really nice. Ask for her then. <laughs> At the beginning the chocolate was not the candy that you and I love so much. It was actually a spicy drink that the Mayans used to, to drink quite a lot. And later it became the sweet candy you were familiar with. We're a small batch artisan chocolate maker here in Salt Lake City and we start with the uh, raw cocoa beans so you know it's a raw agricultural product when we get it and what it does is it supports the farmers a little bit more than the big conglomerates. We, we make sure that we use all organic natural ingredients and there's only three ingredients in our chocolate. Tell me about them. Okay so it's a cocoa bean, cacao bean, uh, organic cane sugar and or a little bit of organic cocoa butter and I add a little bit of the co cocoa butter because I like that mouth feel a little bit better mm -hmm. it melts a little bit easier in your mouth and it's a little smoother and where uh, the grains uh, the beans come from so currently we uh, we have a Madagascar we have uh, a Venezuela Kanawabo we have a uh, Bolivia Palos Blancos and we have a uh, Uganda Bundabugyo <laughs> And how long, uh, how old is the company? We're a year old. This Just one year? Yes, one year. And it's been going really well. I think the people in Utah really support the, the chocolate scene here. And uh, we've got some great chocolate makers and it's been really fun. And what's your distribution right now? Where people can find your, your chocolate? So we're in Harmons, uh, Caputo's, Liberty Heights Fresh, No Brow Coffee, Pirate O's, Dolcetti Gelato, uh, and uh, April 1st we'll be in Whole Foods. Okay. So me, give me a sample. Let's try that. No problem. <laughs> now this is the Which, Madagascar that you're going to try. The Madagascar. And it's really nice and bright and fruity. Almost a red raspberry, cherry, cranberry flavor that you get. And that's all just because of where the bean is grown, the terroir, and how we roast it. We roast a little bit lighter than some, some others so that you can, it, it highlights the taste of the bean a little bit more. Okay. Very, very good. Do you want to try one more? Yeah, why not? Chocolate. <laughs> yeah. Who doesn't like chocolate, right? <laughs> I'm going to be here forever. <laughs> so this, this one? Venezuela, Conawabo. It's on the north northeastern uh, coast of uh, Venezuela. Okay. And as you can see when you taste it, totally different. Very nice Wasatch blend. So this is a blend of Dominican Republic, Costa Rica, and Ecuador. And it's going to be a little bit milder. When you, t when you take the beans and blend them together, you're only going to get a third of the properties of each one of them. So this one's mild, more chocolatey, and uh, maybe a little bit, I get a little bit of nutmeg, spice, uh, cinnamon, uh, and it's a little bit more earthy too. It's very, very good. Can you show us the packaging? Sure, no problem. It's very nice too, very so, clean. Yes, yeah, so each one of these is an individual pouch. There's no additional wrapping required. We do this all by hand. We, we don't make the pouch, but, but it's all, you know, these lovely ladies that I work with. It's my, myself and my two daughters that are at home. So it's a family business. A family. Oh, nice. Yeah, no doubt. And uh, so we, we start by sorting the cocoa beans, roasting them. Winnow, that takes the husk off. And then it stone grinds for about 48 to 72 hours. And then uh, we mold them up into the bars and package them by hand, and here they are. So, and, and this is brand new packaging that we have out today. We thought we'd, we'd debut it here at this chocolate festival, and it kind of explains some of the fa flavors on the back and where it's from so that you know that. And uh, so we really like it. I have dealt with chocolate my entire life. I'm 68. My mother played in chocolate, and I don't remember not having chocolate and having my hand in it. What do you like about it? Oh, I like the challenge. Chocolate not only tastes good, but it is so challenging to work with. Now, I don't make chocolate. I take somebody else's chocolate, and I make confections out of it. And the handling of the chocolate, the melting it, the 
getting it in temper, the making of the confections is where the challenge is because chocolate is always the master. It lets you play and if you get too cocky it'll slap you right back down and make you humble again. <laughs> and then you eat it, right? And then you eat it. And it's the, it's the challenge that, that keeps me interested. If, if it worked per perfectly every time, I'd be bored and I'd move on. And how did you start your business? As I say, my mother always was in the chocolate and about 25 years ago the two of us wrote a book called Candy Making for HP Books. So I just kind of started doing that, just teaching classes and whatever. And I taught everybody how to do the hand dip, the fondant based candies. And then I wasn't special anymore. So I needed to do something different. So I went back to Montreal and took a course on the European style confections. They're all truffle ganache centers and learned how to do the colored cocoa butters and such. It's just blossomed the last eight, ten years to where there's a lot of people doing what I do. I'm one of a very few in, in Utah that do it. There's pastry chefs in-house, say at Montage, Grand America, who may make their own or they may buy them, bring them in. But I'm the only one that I'm aware of that makes them and, and puts them in the stores. What about this tulip flowers here? Ah, I made those yesterday. I don't tell how to make them, but I will tell you on the bowl, it's just a balloon, and I just put the chocolate, pipe the chocolate on and just make it look rustic. I just make it look that way because I can't make it look real pretty. And so it's just kind of a fun. Then I did a little mold for a base to hold it on to. And it's just kind of a little eye catcher, so it's just fun. So I know you sell online, I've been on your website, and it's a gorgeous website. The pieces are so... Do you use paint? What is it? Because sometimes it looks like it's just it's a... It's colored cocoa butter. Totally edible, and we spray it on with an airbrush. And the ones that have a pattern, such as this one, are actually a silk screen. It's cocoa butter on a silk screen that is then applied to the chocolate. Uh, do you also have a local store? I don't have a brick and mortar. I am home based under the cottage food rule, but I, on my website it lists the stores that do carry it. I'm only one person with a helper, and I can't, I can't, I don't do big production, and so I've got five or six stores that I supply. So tell me once again your site for for people to check it, it out. Chocolat.com. Again, that's C H O C O L O T. What is really re interesting about chocolate is that it was also called food for the gods because it was extremely rare and expensive. Usually the kings would have the, the, you know, the pleasure of drinking that cacao spicy mix. Now, it was also used by the Aztecs as money, as currency, and they used to pay the rulers in their cities as well with the cacao. Cacao actually grows on the trunks and branches of the tree as opposed to on the leaves like other fruit. So then it goes through a fermentation process. It's dried on concrete patios. Um, and then we get it raw. Once it comes into our factory, we um, roast the beans and then separate the shell from the nibs, mill it for two days in a stone on stone mill, and then temper it to make it structurally sound. All our bars are hand wrapped. We produce a beautiful 70, most of our bars are 70% cacao. How long have you uh, have the business? We've been in the business for about two and a half years. Um, we have a coffee roasting business that we've had for about 23 years. And so we took what we learned um, in ro about roasting coffee and applied it to roasting cacao. Nice. And tell me about some of the chocolates, your, uh, the, the best sellers. What are they? Oh, our best sellers, well, of course, are pure, but then salt. Salt and, and chocolate have become really popular. Salt and caramel have become really popular. So I think um, also salt intensifies flavors, and it prepares your palate for flavor, and so it really intensifies whatever you're eating. So, Do you have a local store? Do you sell online? We're primarily, we do sell online at MillCreekCacao.com. We have a local store at Mill Creek Coffee Roasters, and we also have wonderful partners like Harmon's, Liberty Heights Fresh, Caputo's that we sell to as well. Can people find outside the state as well? In yes, we sell in Washington State, Oregon, New York, um, and hopefully more and more states, so, <laughs> and, and globally. Let's take a look today at the Independence Bed Table by Standard. It's a fantastic product, and I actually sent one to my mother the other day. 
The Independence Bed Table by Standards is every person's dream of having a table in bed. The included swivel tray rotates 360 degrees and is large enough to hold your food, book, laptop, or your favorite beverage and swivel out of the way when not in use. The tray is coated with a non-skid surface to ensure your food and drinks stay where you want them on your tray. With the tray swivel out of the way, it can then be used as a bed handle to assist you in getting in and out of bed. It also comes with a handy organizer pouch to keep important items close. The Independence Bed Table Bystanders is a multifunctional product that provides independence and comfort to anyone. I need a moment to rant. Rant about something that really bugs me a lot, and I bet it bugs you too. How the market, some retailers, some companies, and many advertisers really forget about the boomers. It looks like we fit all in one bucket, old. And many times, like in some websites, we don't even have an age group anymore. What's going on? Do they think that boomers don't spend money? Let me give you some hard facts. Numbers by AARP. Did you know that the boomers spend an average of $31 trillion every single year? Yes, and it looks like everything now is about advertising to millennials. Well, millennials spend an average of $800 billion a year. See the difference? Millennials, $800 billion. Boomers, $31 trillion is a huge difference. Not only that, millennials tend to spend more on tech gadgets, Starbucks, right? Cool stuff. We boomers cross all over the board. We buy the cool stuff, we buy gadgets, we go to Starbucks, and we consume a lot more. We are on a moment in our lives where we have disposable income to spend. But it looks like when it comes to companies and to, to advertisers, we just don't exist. They put everybody in the old bucket. You know, it's interesting to see that because next year, the first person to turn 50 will be a Gen X. So what, what are we going to say? Gen Xers are old too? Come on, people, wake up. When we are young, we are putting our lives together, we are creating families, we are paying school debts. We have a lot to think about and not a lot of disposable income. So yes, we, the millennials might be power users and they want to consume, but they don't have disposable income as the boomers do. So why companies now forget to make plans for people over 50? Marketing strategies for people over 50, language, fonts on their websites, colors that are pleasing to boomers. We have money to spend, 31 trillion. Why are you going to leave money on the table? Hey, pay attention to boomers. We deserve that. Oh. <laughs> well, you know, Shahar, I always thought I was hip and cool. I don't feel 51. But I bought something online. I was trying to remember what it was, too. And you answered the short little surveys after your purchase. My age group wasn't even on the choice. And I felt really old. So, I, I guess that means I'm getting older. <laughs> I'm no longer in the, the um, demographic that people think are spending their money, but I can tell you, <laughs> boomers love to spend their money. <laughs> That's what we worked our whole life for, and we enjoy it. So, I'll just have to forget that I wasn't represented and just, I don't know. But um, it is a little disappointing to sometimes not be represented in the age group. And for a minute there, I thought maybe I was buying something too hip and young for a 51-year-old woman. But as long as it's not uh, leopard shoes or polka dot purses or something and I look my age, I'll buy anything I want. <laughs> you heard many times before that boomers have reshaped every single phase of their lives. And why? Because as baby boomers, we have always been trendsetters. And here are a few things that we did. We caused our parents to move to the suburbs. We marched for equal rights for blacks, women, and gays. We rallied for peace beginning with Vietnam and continuing to today. We entered college in droves. We loved to go to college. Fought against the corporate glass ceiling. We gave birth to fewer children than the other generations. Uh, I don't know that because I live in Utah, so I don't know if that's really true. But that's what the research says. 
we bought minivans and chauffeur our kids to play dates and activities. And we uh, started to add the exercise craze. Remember all those DVDs with Jane Fonda and all the others that follow? Yeah, that was us trying to get in shape. I'm still trying that. I hope you enjoyed the show this week. If you did, don't forget to share, thumbs up, rate our channel. These are the type of things that keep us going. And I'll meet you next week at Boomerology Revealed. This episode of Boomerology Revealed is brought to you by Standard, your best option for mobility products. Be independent with Standard.com.